How does Magnus Carlsen use the Italian opening to beat world number four in rapid chess? USA number one, Hikaru Nakamura. Here are the timestamps for this video. Feel free to jump around. This game took place in the final of the new in chess tournament. At the end, there will be a puzzle and I will go through the standings. If it's your first time here, hello, my name is William. Let's get this show on the road. This bishop is much better than this one. You have a knight on f5 and you're not even down a pawn. Your queen is on a very active square and it's just time to get these guys in the game soon. A dream position for white. Carlsen has white, Nakamura has black, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5. We have the Italian game. Because the Italian flag has green, white and red, let's change up the colours. C3, controlling the centre, knight f6, attacking the centre pawn and now d3. Defend your centre. Castle, castle, black now strikes with d5. Normally you can play d6, you have this pawn chain. Every pawn defends each other in the centre, but black goes for a more aggressive setup with d5. Take, take. Lots of options for both sides. White might put his rook on e1 to attack the centre pawn along with the knight, but black can defend it by putting his rook on e8. Or he can play f6. a4 played, Carlsen gets space on the queen side. He can go b4 next along with a5, get more space. Bishop g4, pin the knight to the queen. h3, kick the bishop away. Bishop to h5, keep the pin, keep the pressure. a5. If you get this position with white in your games, you may want to try these moves. a5 with b4 to get even more space. Put a rook in the center to attack the pawn. And then this knight can come in the game. Knight d2, knight e4. Just putting all your pieces on good squares. a5 played. Knight f6. Nakamura deliberately moves the knight away from the center because he wants to go for e4. Carlsen attacks the bishop first. The bishop drops back. e4 is coming, so knight d2 stops it. a6, controlling the b5 square. Knight in the center and a gigantic decision to get rid of this knight. Take, take. And what happens now? I think white's bishop is much better than black's. Even though this bishop pins the knight to the queen, this bishop is very active on this diagonal. I really like white's position. King gets out of the way because then black can play f6, f5. Queen d3, you get out of the pin, but also with this move, you are stopping black playing f5. So queen d3 is a great move. Queen e7, perhaps getting the rook in the game. Yes and no. Rook e1, put the rook in the middle, knight d8 first. Nakamura wants to reroute his knight to go to e6, then to f4. g3 played. Carlsen is just looking many moves ahead. You play a useful move like g3. Controlling the square, the king can actually come up as well. Knight e6, knight h4, really cool move. So that is actually the point of g3. Control f4, but you give yourself this option on the next move, planning to come into f5. Gary Kasparov once said, a knight on f5 is worth a pawn. When you get a knight to this square, Normally, it's such a powerful knight. Rook a d8, facing the queen. Knight f5 first, you attack his queen, queen f6. So it looks like black is threatening a discovery. Bishop takes pawn, then the rook will attack the queen. So white gets out the way, right? Wrong. He just goes g4 first, attacking the bishop. Then he gets out the way. By the way, you can't go bishop takes b4. Because you go queen f3, and this is the problem. Both bishops are being attacked, and you cannot save both bishops at the same time. That's why Carlsen could flick in this very useful move g4, attack his bishop, then queen f3. This, I would say, I mean, it's basically a dream position for white. This bishop is much better than this one. You have a knight on f5 and you're not even down a pawn. Your queen is on a very active square and it's just time to get these guys in the game soon. A dream position for white h6 played, king g2, and now knight f4 check, perhaps a mistake, another option, because I checked with stockfish, you can play rook e8 first, and then the next move you can play knight f4, and there's going to be a small difference, so let's quickly discuss it. You could play a move like bishop d2 or bishop e3, but knight f4 check might be all right now, because take, 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 and you can take with the rook. This is a huge difference compared to the game because you control this square. Now, if we actually go to the game, king g2, knight f4 check. Why is this not so good? Because after take, take, 
if we play exactly the same moves. Take, you cannot take with the rook now. What a shame, black's rook is not on e8 controlling the e5 square because now e5. A fork, a double attack on queen and rook. So this is the big difference. On the previous move, perhaps Nakamura should have played rook e8. Just get that rook in the game. Two rooks on the d and e files. But knight f4 check was played. Take, take. Take, and now he has to take with the pawn or the queen. Pawn takes was chosen, bishop d5. Remember what I said a few moves ago, comparing this bishop with that bishop. Well, this bishop is an absolutely perfect piece right in the center of the board. Whereas this bishop is doing nothing. Rook d7 played to defend. Rook d1 played. One option is actually to play bishop takes b7, which Carlson actually do, does on the next move. But if you take, now e5, that's the point. Queen attacks that. If you take, take, and then e4, the game goes on. Still a mess. If you go queen e7, now you take. Attacking queen with pawn and rook. Can't take because you lose your rook. But if you go queen d7, this is the difference. Now you can go rook e7, winning the rook. So it's a really cool tactic. But Carlson, he was just building it up. Maybe he gets his rook in the game. Then he plays the move. So rook d1, played. Rook e8, now bishop takes b7. One option is to play c4, just keep the tension. Just keep a gigantic space advantage. A Maroxy bind is when white has two pawns, c4 and e4 controlling the d5 square, but maybe we can call this the Maroxy bishop bind. You've got two pawns with a bishop right in the middle, a perfect bishop in the center. Bishop takes b7 plate. Now it is a little different. Nakamura takes the bishop, e5. Discovered attack just like before, but now queen e7. Take on d6 just like before, now queen d7. Queen attacks rook, the rooks can trade. And that's exactly what happens, take, take. And here, rook d4 is the only move. You cannot play queen takes rook because bishop e4 check, picking up the queen. So rook d4, rook d7 played to stop white pushing his pawn. And now queen takes f4. What do you have here? Let's assess this position. It is exactly three pawns for the bishop. White has seven pawns, black has four pawns. Who would you pick here? I would pick white because I cannot see how on earth you are going to get this bishop in the game. Maybe one idea is actually this. One, two, three. So that's some pretty cool geometry. If you can put the bishop on that spot, then maybe I would take black. But it's going to take a very long time to get there. Queen b8 played, keeping an eye on the d6 pawn. King g3, f6 controlling the squares, h4, with g5 as a pawn break. King g8, king back, bishop f7. So a bit of shuffling here, g5, trying to go for a pawn break, take, take. Now black blunders with f takes g5. Here was a shot for black. Nakamura can come back in the game with this really cool move, queen b5, coming in to f1. If you take, now queen f1, and all of a sudden, it just goes to show how tough chess is. It's checkmate. One way to stop it is to run the king, but the king and queen are on the same line. So rook f7 is now possible. If you play queen h4, because that guards the square, Still rook f7, because you cannot take, because queen f2. And that's mate, all of a sudden. Bishop actually controls those squares. But black missed his shot. F takes g5 was actually played. And you don't take back, you go queen e5, because you need to keep your d6 pawn. These pawns are not running anywhere. Bishop f7, f3, king f8, king f2, king gets out of the way, king back. And queen takes g5, Carlson now goes for the win. Rook takes d6, Carlsen puts the pressure. And by putting the pressure, I mean he plays queen c5. Keep the pin, keep the pressure. Queen c5 stops the rook moving. King has to go to e7 to defend it. Queen e5 check. You can't go rook e6 because your queen is hanging. So king d7, king gets out of the way. Now, you can't play queen takes g7 because rook takes rook is discovered check. Oops. So there's got to be another move. After king d7, king gets out of the way. Can't take because we still have the same problem. The queen is hanging 
on b8. After king f2, queen f8 was played. Now, this does defend the rook and the pawn, but in a few moves, we're going to see why this is completely losing for black. Queen f5, check. King c6, queen c5, check. King back, check. King back. And now rook takes d6, check. And this is the problem. If you take with the king, you win the queen via a skewer. Queen c5, check. That's why after rook takes d6, he had to take with a queen, but this chucks the bishop on f7. Queen d2 check. Now we have the next phase of the game. It is now a queen endgame, which are so tricky. Even though you may be one or two pawns up, it could still be a draw because the queens can always keep giving checks. King up, take. Queen e8 check. King c7, queen e4. Now we reach this endgame, a perfect square for the queen on this spot. You defend the pawn on b4, which defends a5. You also defend f3, so you give your king room. You give your king some options just to come in the game. Queen e4, what a great move. King d6. King up. Queen up. Check. Check. And queen c5, now defending this. King hides. King comes closer. Queen d5, offering a trade and giving the king room to come over to the queen side. Got to get after that pawn. Queen e4 check, perfect spot. Throw in a check. King king d6. Queen b5, king c7. Queen e6 check. Queen d6, defending and giving yourself the chance to push. Really cool coordination from white. Queen e2, f4. Notice the previous blue square, e4, it was the perfect spot for the queen, but now Carlson has improved the placement of the queen. The new perfect square is on d6, because on this square, it defends the pawn, which defends a5, and he defends the other pawn, giving this king freedom to go after black's pawn. A new perfect square. Queen b5, offering a trade, no trade. Check, check, and now check. King b6, check, king in the corner. Call journey. King was on g1, it ran up to g4, and then it traveled along this diagonal, e5, d6, c7, b6, a7. Now the king is in the corner, ready to come after the a6 pawn. Queen f1, check, 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 and f5. Queen b1, attacking both. Queen d6, defend this. Why is saying, if you take my f5 pawn, I can take your a6 pawn. That's a fair trade for me because I'm gonna get two pawns, two runners. That's exactly what happens. g5, push. Queen f1, stopping white moving. But you get your king out of the way and then you can push your other runner, king b6. That pawn is coming home. Throw in a check, queen c5. It's a cool moment here. Queen f6 check was played in game, but just to show you, check, check. And the king is in the square. If it is your move and you are in the square, then you are perfectly in time to come back. This is a five by five square. If you push, here, now we're in a 4x4 four four square. Push. We have a 3x3 three three square. And we're good. So this is just a cool endgame technique. The rule of the square. White is in time to stop the pawn. That's why after queen c5, there was no queen trade. Queen f6, check. King moves. Now run the pawn down. Check. King up. Push, push, push push. Now this is a really cool moment because I saw this as the game was happening live. Just really clean finish. I really like this move. Queen c7. Game over. That's it. Now if king g7, you can actually just grab the pawn. But there's an even cooler finish. Imagine if this option didn't exist. You can take and then go b b7. That's a really cool option. It's like you give the guy a queen but it's really cool because you can find a way to get queens off. Queen a7 check. It's just really cool geometry. I was really pleased to see this live, listening to Peter Lecko and Tanya Sachdev commentate. Take, take, and you're just gonna run it home. So a really cool line. So b7 played. Check, king up, and queen f2. In this moment, during the commentary, during the live cam, Magnus, he was so angry to even give Black this chance. Because if you take, I mean, it is not over. Qu 
queen, queen, and you've got an A pawn, and it can be very difficult to run this up the board because the king is in the way. But even after this move, white still has a really cool option. You just go queen b6 because if you take, you take this way. Now it is a B pawn. And this pawn, well, you're going to move the king out of the way, maybe throw in a check. Move the king out of the way, let's say here, run it up, sidestep. It's going to be easier to queen a pawn. Can't queen at the moment, so let's throw in a check. Just show some control. King h6 and queen e4. Perfect spot, just like we saw before. But why put the queen on the square? If you move the queen out of the way. Queen g7 was played, and in this position, Nakamura actually resigned because there's just a cool way to pick up the pawn. Check. Game over. King moves out of the way. Check. You're going to take, and then you're going to queen. After queen e4, if you throw in a check, then king a8. This is the idea. The queen actually defends the diagonal, so then you can promote. But in queen endgames, it's always so tricky. When I saw this position, I thought, there's actually one more trick. <laughs> If you are not careful, queen f6, do not get a queen. Chess is so tough. Chess is cruel. Queen a6 check. How cruel is chess? There's only one move, and then you go check. And there's no way to escape perpetual check. Check. And you just come back, and that is a draw. So this is a trap you don't want to fall for. You, you've got an extra queen, but there is no good way to block the checks. After this, queen e4, queen g7, black resigned, because queen h4 check. Check, and you pick it up, and you get a queen. Here are the final standings. First two games were drawn, second two games were won by Carlsen. So, Magnus wins 3-1. This was actually the fourth game in which Magnus won. Let's take it from this position. The queen has actually come back to e4. It is now black to move. Let me know in the comments below. I'm going to provide the answers below so you can check if you got it right. Here's YouTube's suggestion for what to watch next. But if you don't like their option, here's mine. Checkmate Magnus Carlsen in 30 seconds. This game was recorded live on Lee Chess. Part 1 of the video is the opening theory to the Sicilian Dragon. But part 2 is the live recording. I think you'll really like this video. Thanks for watching.